Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today we continue to look at the case of the Stockton serial killer. He was caught on October 15, 2022, while out hunting for another victim, and he was arraigned in court, pictured here, on October 18th, 2022. That was the same day that there was a press conference, which we all watched together. So if you missed that, please check out the playlist for this case. We have been deep diving the case on this channel. Um, we've done presentations and bullet points and map time. And we've even analyzed the moon and patterns and everything. So I hope that you will check that out if you missed out on it or if this is your very first time coming across this channel or this case the Stockton serial killer was causing of course a huge amount of concern and fear in the Stockton California area because it seemed like his killing spree was getting more and more momentum like he was escalating in behavior which of course we expect in these cases. Thankfully, the Stockton PD caught him, and they said it's also based on good old-fashioned police work as well as community tips. So that was really great that they caught him so quickly. Let's have a look at this footage from him in court on Tuesday, October 18th, where his charges were read to him. So far, there's only been three murder charges that he is facing out of the six known victims, and then there's the attempted murder as well. So we'll look at what that victim has said. She's the only survivor in this case that we know of so far. But as the sheriff said, we just don't know how many victims there might be that crossed paths with this killer. So let's have a look at what happened here on Tuesday. Those rights are as follows. You have the right to know the charges filed against you and to know the minimum and maximum punishments for those charges. You have the right to an attorney at all critical stages of your case, including this stage. If you would like to hire your own attorney, you do have the right to have a reasonable continuance so you can do so. If you cannot afford an attorney, you do have the right to have an attorney appointed to represent you at little or no cost to you. You have the right to a speedy and public preliminary hearing to ensure that there is at least probable cause to believe you committed the offense before you can even get to a trial. You have the right to a speedy and public... I find his eye movements very interesting. I'm not too sure if he's just looking up and thinking, but have a look as we continue to watch this, that every time they say murder, his eyes flick up like that as well. It's just interesting to me. Let me know in the comments below what you think. The trial be for a judge or a jury, and you cannot be convicted unless there is proof beyond a reasonable doubt that you're guilty of the charges. At those hearings, you have the right to confront and cross-examine all the witnesses that may be called to testify against you. Also at those hearings, you have the right to present a defense, which includes the right to testify, the right to put on witnesses on your own behalf and to produce evidence and to have free subpoenas to get your witnesses and evidence to court. Finally, you have the right against self-incrimination. This means no one can force you to testify or admit the violation and your silence cannot be used against you in any way. 
I do need to disclose that my son-in-law is the deputy district attorney in this county. He will not appear on your case. He does not appear in front of me. It will not affect my ability to be fair, but it is my duty to disclose that. You are charged by way of a, uh, an amended complaint in count one with a violation of penal code section 187, murder of one Jonathan Rodriguez Hernandez. You are charged in count two with a violation of penal code section 187, murder of one Juan Carlos Carranza hyphen Cruz. You are charged in count three with a violation of 187, murder of one Lawrence Lopez. As to each of these charges, you are also charged with intentional discharge of a firearm causing great bodily injury or death. Also charged with use of a firearm in commission of a felony. Also charged with a special circumstance of multiple murders. The minimum punishments for these charges would be life in prison without the possibility of parole. The maximum punishment would be death. Did you understand the rights I just went over with you? Yes. What would you like to do with your case today? Would you like me to appoint an attorney to represent you? Yes. And can you afford your own attorney? I'm not sure at the moment. Then I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. We're going to pass this for just a moment. Who has this for the people? Elton Grau for the people, Your Honor. Mr. Grau, there's a trailing traffic infraction for unlawful to disobey signs or signals from December of 2020. Today we're not dismissing it, Your Honor. You will not be dismissing it? Correct. Right. That'll trail. Thank you, Your Honor. Allison Nevera on behalf of the Public Defender's Office. I will be accepting this case today. I have reviewed the um, complaint with a formal reading of Raymond and Wrights. At this time, I believe uh, we are requesting to come back for further arraignment on November 14th. At this time, the, court, the case will be assigned to Judge Diaz Goodwell for all purposes. What day did you want? November 14th. Your November 14th. That will be at 8.30 in Department 9A, I believe. Mm -hmm. Judge, for purposes of the record, I do want to state some things about bail and I'm requesting yes. bail. Pursuant to Article 1 of Section 28, the court must take into consideration the protection of the public. Additionally, under Article 1, Section 12 of the bail, uh, it's prohibited for capital cases. Here, the defendant is charged with three murders with the multiple murder enhancement, making it a capital case. Between August 20th, 2022 through September 27th, 2022, the defendant shot and killed three victims listed in the complaint. On October 15th, 2022, the defendant was apprehended by the Stockton Police Department and was found to have a firearm. That firearm is commonly known as a ghost gun in his waistband. Those facts are reflected in the count four. The firearms listed in count four and the ballistic evidence discovered at the scene of the three murders have been examined. There is high confidence the firearm is linked to those three murders and the scene. In addition, cellular data associated with Mr. Brown Lee places him at the locations and the temporal proximity of the multiple murders that we have charged in the complaint. So now we know that ballistics help to connect all the cases as well as his cell phone, which showed his locations, which matched where these crimes occurred. At least three other murders are being investigated or actively being investigated by the DA's office. In those cases, it is indicated that Mr. Brownlee is associated with those cases. They are three uncharged murder cases. Lastly, as, as publicly mentioned by the Stockton Police Chief, prior to being apprehended in the early mornings of October 15th, Mr. Brownlee was seen stalking various unsuspecting victims at the local city park. At that point, the Stockton Police Department decided to apprehend him. When he was apprehended, he was found with a firearm. And because of these facts, we're asking the court to find no bail. In particular, by clear and convincing evidence, there is no alternative method for incarceration. Any comments, All right. Under Article 1, Section 28 F3, I do find there's a public safety risk. For that alone, he would be held without bail. 
Also, Article 1, Section 12A, he's not entitled to bail. So for those, uh, both of those reasons, all right, so uh, November 14th at 8.30 in Department 9A, 9B, excuse me, 9B in front of Judge. There seemed to be like a little pause that they'd cut out when they showed this footage. So we continue from here. Uh, the approved law for all purposes. Thank you. Yeah. Anything further on behalf of the people? No, Your Honor. On behalf of the defendant? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you. <coughs> Let's have a look as he walks out. Okay, so that is the footage from him at his arraignment. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That is not at all how I expected him to look, to sound, to stand or anything. Not that we can really judge just from the surveillance footage, but yet it's just not what I expected, right? What do you think? I guess the point in me saying that is that so often people think that serial killers are some really scary man running down the street kind of like drooling with a knife in his hand. You know what I mean? Like total extremes. And it's just never like that. With majority of these serial killers, they blend into society pretty well. And they might even look really meek, really timid when you talk to them. So it's always interesting. It was the same in the case of Jeffrey Dahmer, who was described as, you know, very timid, very gentle, when people spoke to him, of course, highly manipulative. But wow, this just fits the profile, actually, of a serial killer, just based on even him just standing there and being so quiet and so cooperative and all of that right now. I know they're not all like that, but let me know what you think. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Let's quickly have a look at this clip where the police chief recounts the serial killer arrest. I, I got that phone call, I think it was about 1.30 in the morning, saying, um, we got him. An early Saturday morning call confirming the arrest of 43-year-old Wesley Brownlee, the accused serial killer who'd been on the loose in Stockton. Police Chief Stanley McFadden says he's proud of his officers. I know how hard it is to catch a serial killer. I, I, it's, it's, it can be over several years, you know, for so the quickness and the apprehension is not normal. It's just, I think it's perfection. He also thanks the community for tips that helped lead them to Brownlee, many stemming from this unique stride caught on camera. Some of the information from different sources were consistent. There was, okay, you know, we might have something here. Police started watching the Stockton man, and they say Saturday he was scoping out a spot for his next deadly shooting. Throughout the surveillance, um, he was looking around parks, he was looking around dark areas, you know, just different areas that might have proved to be an opportunity for him to kill. And uh, once we knew he encountered an area where there was someone that was vulnerable and alone and in a dark place, that's when we acted. He says there was someone alone here at Pinella Park in danger of becoming the next victim. So police pulled Brownlee over near Village Green Drive in Winslow Way. He was driving a teal or green van, police say, wearing dark clothes with a mask around his neck and this gun on him. Police arrested Brownlee, accusing him in six killings. It's about bringing closure to our victims. Um, it's about how strong we are when the police department and the community comes together. Um, it's about us all having zero tolerance on crime. And if you see something, say something. And let's also have a look at this clip. Three other families showed up to the arraignment to see the man behind an investigation that left six dead. Jerry Lopez and his mother, Pauline Lopez, were among those present. I didn't even want to look at him because you know what? He's a Stocktonian. It's just hard to see somebody that would do something like that to, to another person here in town. Natasha, the only known survivor in the investigation, was also inside the courtroom, but walked out after Wesley Brownlee was brought in. Well, he wouldn't give any, any eye contact to anybody, so um, just a little, bit of, a little bit of frustration. But then also immediately I just, um, I, I couldn't imagine being in his situation, so I prayed for him. Natasha, speaking to KCRA for the first time, describes being annoyed about the charges filed today, only covering three of the murders and not including her shooting. I was uh, angry that there are no charges of what he did to me. That's why I was angry. 
they haven't, there's no charges there of what he did. Then I wanted to show you this clip where they say Stockton residents skeptical of suspected killer identity want more evidence. So let's just have a look at this. Do they have the right person? This is the question surrounding the Stockton community after Wesley Brownlee was taken into custody in connection to the Stockton serial killings. After I sputtered around and thought about it, I said there is a $130,000 reward. I'd take a, a brown mannequin up there. Let's see if that would work. Elise Sarif, a longtime resident, believes the large reward had something to do with the arrest. Then there's Deborah Polk, who is waiting to see more evidence come forth so she can completely feel safe again. I'm waiting for the ballistics report. You know what I mean? I'm like, everybody is innocent until proven guilty. I don't know what all information the police have because we're not privileged to all that information. And while they wait to hear more details, there was another homicide in Stockton early this morning. There is no connection or correlation between any of the incident or the evidence that occurred in the early morning, unfortunate taking of another you know, community member's life. The San Joaquin uh, District Attorney says they are confident they have their killer. We believe beyond a reasonable doubt that we have the right suspect in custody. We wouldn't charge the case if we didn't have sufficient evidence to, to believe that is true and correct. Community members now asking all authorities for transparency as they try to go back to not living in fear. Be completely open with the public, you know, as they get information. Yeah. And then maybe somebody, will, folks will come in and shed light. You're wrong there to the Stockton Police Department. So what I find interesting is that the day that the Stockton serial killer, suspected serial killer, was arraigned, another shooting happened at one o'clock in the morning in Stockton. So that doesn't to me mean that they've got the wrong guy. It just means that people need to remain vigilant. Initially, when they were looking for the killer, they did say they don't know if it's just one person or more than one person committing these crimes. Now, from everything we know and have been told, this is one person that they have caught that they believe, without a shadow of a doubt, is the Stockton serial killer. But there are other murders that have taken place. There are other homeless uh, tents and camps that have been burnt. There's other people that have been shot. So oftentimes in serial killer cases, you get copycats. There are so many times pretty much every time that there will be a copycat serial killer or someone inspired by the killer and then they go and do the same thing. So just make sure that if, if you live in the area, it doesn't actually matter where you live, always stay safe, hyper vigilant, don't be out alone at night um, because this there's still shootings happening at night in Stockton. Let me show you one example. So this article right here says shooting near Aurora and Worth not connected to serial killings, Stockton police say. This was posted on October 10th, 2022. And here they say a man was rushed to the hospital after a shooting Sunday morning and detectives now must piece together what led to the gunfire. The life-threatening shooting near Aurora and Worth streets early Sunday morning is not related to the series of connected killings in Stockland and Oakland, police spokesman officer Joseph Silver said on Monday. At this time, detectives do not believe the shooting is related to the series, Silver said. The series of seven shootings, six fatal, have occurred late at night and early in the morning in isolated areas, according to police. Here's what we know so far about Sunday's incident. At about 4.31 a.m., that sounds to me like early morning hours, but okay, on Sunday, police went to the area of Aurora Street and East Worth Street after gunshots rang and calls flooded into 911, police said. The intersection of Aurora and Worth is in an industrial zone about five blocks south of the Crosstown Freeway near where a bridge extends Aurora over a large homeless encampment in Mormon Slough. The man was rushed to a local hospital with life-threatening injuries, according to police. He was last noted in serious condition, but his status hasn't been updated since Sunday. A spokesperson for the San Joaquin County Medical Examiner said... No one died in the incident. Police did not release any further information about the victim, including his identity. The motive behind the shooting also hasn't been released. And as I say, this was published on October 10th. So that's a week before the Stockton serial killer was even caught. 
Then we also have this article here where they say deadly overnight shooting under investigation in Stockton. Deputies with the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office responded to reports of a shooting around 1 a.m. in the 4000 block of East 24th Street. Now this was published on October 18th. This was the same day that Wesley Brownlee was arraigned this shooting occurred. A deadly overnight shooting is under investigation in Stockton on Tuesday. Deputies with the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office responded to reports of a shooting around 1 a.m. in the 4000 block of East 4th Street. A man was shot and died at the scene. Detectives are investigating it as a homicide and they are working to find information on a possible shooter. Anyone with information about the shooting can call the Sheriff's Office at 209-468-4400, select option 1, and refer to case number 2221982. So I find it very interesting that on the same day that the Stockton serial killer, suspected serial killer, is arraigned, facing three murder charges, and they're still investigating so that they can prove that he committed the other three murders, as well as the attempted murder of Natasha Latour that we just saw in those clips as well. It's interesting. Maybe it's a copycat. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe it's someone who was an accomplice or would continue on with this mission that he was on. We just don't know at this point. But I would say if you live in Stockton, I don't think it's time to just completely let your guard down. We want everyone to be able to breathe easy. But it does sound scary. And there's many of these types of cases that I'm collecting to try to see if there's still an ongoing pattern or what's really going on there. Because there's quite a few that I find here and there that doesn't really make it to the official uh, Stockton PD Facebook page or social media or isn't like big news. You have to dig, dig and here and there you find ones. It's like, wait a minute. So I'll keep an eye on it as well. But, you know, I would just say be very careful. Don't go alone, out alone at night if you can help it. Make sure that you are not distracted. Um, be hyper vigilant. Unfortunately, we have to live this way because, you know, you just never know who is lurking, who's watching, and what their motives really are. And lastly, I'll quickly show you this document in case you missed it. So these documents are the people of the state of California plaintiff versus Wesley Brownlee. So you can see how you spell his name there and everything. And you can see all the counts, the charges that he's facing. Count one would be murder. And this would be the murder of Jonathan Rodriguez Hernandez. And then intentional discharge of a firearm as well. Use of a firearm in commission of a felony. Special circumstance. Remember at the press conference how they said that there's a special circumstance to this case. Here they say convicted of multiple murders. So that would be the special circumstance. They say it's further alleged that defendant Wesley Brownlee in this proceeding has been convicted of more than one offense of murder in the first or second degree for a further and separate cause of complaint being a different offense from but connected in its commission with the charge or charges above the complainant further complains and says count two murder this would be the murder of juan carlos carranza cruz and again the intentional discharge of a firearm a use of firearm and commission of a felony special circumstance count three murder of lawrence lopez and you can just see it's obviously repeating the information there count four felon or addict possession etc a firearm so wesley brownlee did commit the crime of felon addict possession etc firearm in violation of the section 29800a1 of the penal code a felony who at the time and place last day for said did willfully and unlawfully own purchase receive or have in his possession or under his custody or control a firearm to wit a handgun and said defendant wesley brownlee having therefore been duly and legally convicted of a felony or felonies to wit the crime of possession of cocaine base for sale in violation of the section 11351.5 of health and safety code that was from 2015 so if you missed the deep dive into all these previous charges um, please check out my previous episode then you can see all of that in bullet points chronologically for you 
Count five is possession of ammunition. And so far, those are the charges that he's facing. Three murder charges and then, of course, of being in possession of this firearm, which they said is a ghost gun. And so if he is the man who committed all six murders and the attempted murder, I really hope that they'll be able to get justice for all the victims, including the other three charges he hasn't yet faced or the attempted murder. Well, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoy the episode. Remember, when you give this video a thumbs up, it's not because you like the topic or like the serial killer. It's just that you like the way I cover true crime or you are helping to get these cases into the algorithm by hitting the thumbs up, sharing it to Twitter, Facebook, or wherever you can share it to Reddit as well so that we can help to fight for justice for the victims or help to raise awareness for a missing persons case if that's what we're covering. So thank you so much for taking care of all that below as well. Please leave your comments below. I look forward to reading them and I will see you in the next one. Stay safe.